we've seen in the last couple of years, uh, quite a bit of research has shown that um, the pandemic and, and the impact that that's had on, on people's working lives uh, has put a lot of women at a particular disadvantage and it, it could take years to recover from that impact. Um, and I know that we've been doing some things internally, looking at some policies to see if there's any, anything we can do work with there, um, looking at culture as well within within the organisation. Um, so is there anything that you think uh, business owners uh, externally could do um, to, to ensure that women are receiving fair treatment? That's a great question, Jen. I think it's quite difficult for business owners, actually. There's the obvious stuff to do to stay on the right side of the law, but to address those um challenges that have arisen particularly through COVID and particularly for women through COVID will take a lot more thought and energy. I've heard it said and forgive me I don't have the data to hand on this but I've heard that some some views are that the hybrid working approach for example um, which is great for a, a working mum potentially um, and work indeed a working dad uh, of course working parents uh, uh, all round but that in many cases, it's more likely to be the woman who will take advantage of the hybrid model by staying at home. And that it therefore is more, more likely to be uh, dads and men who are able to work in the office. And that will potentially give them um, that visibility and that will potentially give them the progression opportunities which are eroded by not being phys by potentially by not being physically present now that's one line of thinking and therefore is it actually better and more equal for it to be all or nothing on both sides and then you start to think oh but we wouldn't want that would we because we value the flexibility so i think it's quite complex so actually i'd fall back on something a little bit more generic for business owners to think about which is to put yourselves in the shoes of the people that you're dealing with, of all of your staff. As we're talking about women today, let's say, think about the, the women and the challenges they've got and be, be mindful and tuned into that and what policies you've got, the way you behave, the values of the organisation. What does this business care about? You know, and does it care about all of its employees, mothers, fathers, grandparents? not parents at all, men and women, and how do we reflect that and be empathetic to all of those things? So it is complex. So no simple I, that's fine. I don't think there are any simple answers to such a big question. Um, and I, I agree with you there. I know we've we've seen it in organisations even even pre pandemic, even pre, uh, you know, enforced working from home um, where the people who are offered the development opportunities or the promotions are the people who are visible. Um, and sometimes that's a conscious choice and sometimes it's not. Sometimes that's one of those unconscious uh, biases that, that we all have. Um, but I agree taking that, that approach of putting yourself in someone else's shoes and it sounds really basic and straightforward, but treating staff like individuals with individual needs, which they are. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, Kate, for, for sharing your insight and your advice. Um, I think obviously we've we've made quite a lot of, of progress over the years. We we have more role models. Hopefully we, we have less biases or we're, we're working to address those biases that are in the structures that we're working in. Um, but clearly we, we still have a bit of a way to go, uh, but we're going to work on that. So for, for any business owners watching, don't forget, as, as Kate said, uh, our website is always a good place to start, um, www.acast.org.uk slash advice uh, for further information, for tools and for resources to support all of your employees um, as, as individuals. <laughs>